So now I've got a Boolean equation for this majority circuit. I can now actually draw what the circuit would look like if we tried to build this box out of um, the logic gates that we have, ands, ors, and nots. So this box here, M, internally, what does it look like? So I'll draw a big box here to represent the majority circuit M. We have our three inputs, A, B, and C. And now what do I need? So I need an AND gate that's got um, the A input negated and the B and C inputs unnegated. So if I was drawing this out in full, what I might draw is something like this. So we negate the input A, I have the input B, I feed the output of that AND gate into this AND gate, and then we have the C as well. But there's a slightly more compact notation we can use. I can actually draw an AND gate with three inputs. And this logic gate here basically does the operation A and B and C. I mean, in internally, it's really just two AND gates doubled up back to back. But it means drawing the circuit diagram is a little bit easier. Uh, another thing we can do is we can also add little circles to the inputs or outputs of gates to represent a negation. So rather than drawing a NOT gate and then an AND gate separately, I can just draw a little bubble on one of the inputs like this. And so what this means is you should negate this input first before passing it to the AND gate. It's just another convenient shorthand we can use to make drawing circuit diagrams a little bit easier. Okay, so let's draw this equation out. So I'm going to need one, two, three, four, NAND, four AND gates. Each of them are three inputs, and then we OR all of them together, so I can use one big OR gate with four inputs. Again, that OR gate is just going to be ORing all the inputs together. So here's my big OR gate. Here are my four AND gates. And then I just wire them up appropriately. So for each of these, it looks like a different input's negated. So here I'll negate the A, here I'll negate the B, here I'll negate the C, and then for the last gate there's no inputs that have been negated, and then we just connect all the wires together. So A goes to all of them, but we'll make A the first input. So A goes here, A goes here, A goes here, and there we go, that's all our A inputs. And now we'll, con you always should draw um, dots whenever there's a junction point to represent that these wires are all connected together. So at this point, these wires are connected. At this point here, they don't. So the B wire sort of like jumps over the A wire. So now we're going to connect all the Bs. B goes to every gate. And then the Cs. And you can see, when writing an equation in the form of sum of products, it's then really easy to turn that into a circuit because it's just going to be a stack load of AND gates with possibly some inputs negated or not and then one big OR gate to tie them all together at the end. And there we go. That's our circuit diagram. Uh, again, a lot of this is just shorthand. Uh, if you were asked to draw this out in full using standard gates, you would have to draw a bunch of OR gates for this big four input OR gate and several more AND gates for these triple input AND gates. This big gate here, internally there's nothing really clever going on inside. It just ORs the inputs together using several daisy-chained OR gates. Like this. So inside a big four input OR gate, that's what it looks like inside.